I don't know what I want this video to be. It can be a mixture of different things. But um, one thing that stands out is I've been recording videos for a while and if if this is supposed to be my 50th video then um, what does it mean if I haven't even started publishing? This is the 50th that I will publish but maybe I lead with this one because I don't know where to begin. I've been in and out and through my my journey I've been observing lots of aspects of myself and um, when I watch things like my body then I'm much more aware of the senses and because my awareness in a heightened state in a higher state is drawn towards whatever I focus on that's to say whatever my awareness is <clears throat> if my awareness is on the body then in a higher state I'll experience a high body state and those moments are shared when you allow yourself to let go of any kind of judgment at all. Any kind of thoughts, if possible, at all. Because the judgment comes from the ego and the thoughts come from the mind. And we live in those two particular places too much. We are enthralled in the ego mind state. And we can fluctuate in and out, but it seems like people default to that state all the time. And that's not what life is. Life is way more big than that, way grander. Life is not just how we perceive it in the ego mind state. We can know the truths of like simplicity and beauty and appreciation and connection and portals for further understandings and behaviors and reactions and treatments and building relationships and all that all that can come from stepping outside of your ego stepping outside of your mind and allowing yourself to connect with other aspects of yourself. Because when you cease to think about something, yet you're experiencing it, what part of you is experiencing that? If it's to do with the senses, it's the body. And in a heightened state that just becomes so much more apparent and I've used the power of my mind to kind of to kind of help document what I'm experiencing when I tune more into my body in a higher state so I use high and in high body with the allowance of letting go of my ego and letting go of my mind and letting go of myself, then I allow myself to not care about my physical position in that moment. If I'm recording a piece of nature and I am encapsulated by some beauty and I'm in that moment, my senses are alive. I'm just there, captivated in that moment, that present moment. There are buzzwords like mindfulness and awareness and presence and consciousness and all of this stuff seems so like airy-fairy. But when you start to 
become a human being rather than a human doing right and you realize the true like definition of what that actually means through your experiences if you allow yourself to let go of ego let go of mind for example then you can feel the body and you can get more attuned to being in a higher state without the immediate judgment of like how am I appearing right now? How am I acting? What will people think of me? What do I think of myself? Is this acceptable? Is this unacceptable? You know, all of that judgment, it's all form. We give everything meaning when we give it form. And that's all of the ego. That's all of identity. That's all of creating boundaries. And with the power of the mind, we can analyze our world and create structures and build and understand everything. But I'm just saying that there's way more to understand and way more to just like be and know rather than think and do. Um, and I would say that's entering into a space where you become more of yourselves because you form a relationship with those neglected aspects of self and it's not just a one-off if you think about what you're doing in your life all the time day-to-day -day tasks usually they're consumed with the mind just blah 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 and the ego thinking blah 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 and vice versa they're working together all the time and it's just like ego and mind and they're just like best friends and they're just like, you know, they become one. They become this team. And they, because ego's taken on the mind as like, a, you know, like a tool. Mind doesn't really, mind. Mind um, just wants to learn, just wants to understand things. It's just like forever curious, but very analytical and you know needs to just comprehend everything it won't well ego won't accept um sources of information because ego judges and ego only perceives what ego per can perceive and that's one of the key points as well is that the other aspects of you can perceive in other more truthful ways we're not only limited to what the mind can perceive and what the ego perceives. We're way more than that. And we've got to allow more time in our lives to get in touch with those, experience those, and then know it for yourself. And when you do that, you'll start to try and associate language. <laughs> and you try to start, like, understanding what's going on here well i guess this is what my attempt of that is and i can see that i'm coming across as whatever um, but this just is and i'm becoming less and less afraid of being held back and restricted by how i present myself and how I sound and what I'm saying and the implications of the kind of like whatever the abstract nature of what I'm saying if you can't handle it and if you don't resonate with it why the judgment I mean we usually are afraid of what we don't understand you know if we don't see the danger we are just like oblivious but we need to live a more balanced life and that's not just treating the body like a machine the body is an aspect and if you give it more space to actually come to the forefront rather than the mind and the ego always running the show always at front stage you need to quieten their voices. Ask them to kindly just let go. 
and allow yourself to connect with your senses and then you'll connect with your body and listen out for the words listen out for the judgment listen out for the emotions feel everything that comes through and know that that's not from high because high is just a higher energetic state it's just a high's high's not ego body's not ego mind's not ego you know the body is not the mind. All of these aspects are separate in their own right. And when you tune into them and observe the world through those aspects, you'll come to realize that this is a cohesive pattern. And this is a cohesive further understanding into who the hell we are. And the potential realities that we could build and manifest and attune to and just be in through states of meditation. If you meditate, not that I have, but I imagine it's a lot like this. If you are aware of your mind, then you just let that awareness stay there and you go, yeah, I understand the mind. I understand this concept. I'm going to let it rattle on and then I'm going to choose to just capture it you know push it aside remind yourself oh I'm going to be still you know I can't do it fully now because obviously this is for a purpose of documentation but it's that dialogue of transitioning awareness throughout different aspects of yourself and depending on you know if this was a an avatar if this was a, a playable character in a game it's almost like this is a shell but the player who takes the remote control you know the pilot if you will so the the player who takes control that's to say, like, who you give more power to, who you, who your awareness takes control over and, like, starts to see and believe and feel and interact with this whole experience. If ego is prevalent and strong and mind is allowed to be there and always work in the background, then you have a disconnect of body and you have a disconnect of high. And a lot of the, like, wild, inspired, you know, spontaneity of high, for example, and um, the sensory overload, you know, one with everything, forever listening, forever attentive and alert body, that's always communicating to you through physical language. You know, you need to tune into those different aspects and live in them for a bit, like every day. Because if you are spending most of your time within your mind, within your ego, and you're not allowing much time for anything else, then they will wither and you will reject them as falsities, as fallacies, or you just will tune them out and you will no longer hear them or feel them or see like them. And you would forget You'd forget how to connect to your other superpowers. The ones that you knew as a child. The ones you know as early forms of consciousness. If you are like an animal and that animal becomes a pet and that pet learns the mannerisms of the owner, develops a rich bond with a human being, which is a much higher level of 
you know, sentient consciousness, then it's entirely possible for those animals to actually like grow in their awareness, like their, their consciousness will become more aware of itself and of things or understand things or maybe not on an intellectual, you know, mind level, but there is definitely like an, I don't know, an emergence of consciousness through interacting with higher levels of consciousness. So like an animal to a human and a human to higher levels of consciousness. We don't have higher physical beings to interact with, you know. Um, it's quite rare to find human beings who have a much more like well-rounded and well-balanced um, form of experience you know they've gone through the journey themselves they're able to articulate it they're able to like conceive it and capture it and you know rationally like break it up into chunk-sized pieces in order to break it down and and distribute it and teach it and communicate you know as effectively as possible um I, I don't know what my, uh, you know, end goal is here. It's all coming from an intent. It's the intent is in the moment, connect with truths. And as I experience day to day life, whatever I'm interacting with, <clears throat> I'm always watching these different aspects of myself and I haven't mentioned a couple others and who knows how many other aspects there are but the more I view them as characters within me I'll give them names and I'll give them characteristics it's as if they're like a family you know or, or a close group of friends and so if you start to imagine aspects of yourself as like a friend who you can see in your social group, you get to know their characteristic. You get to know why they're different from the other friend and what their traits are, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. What's their um, modus operandi? Operandi? Operandi. What's their MO? Like what makes them tick? The, the realization when you start to see all these different characteristics there within you, it's just a lot of them are suppressed. A lot of them have been ignored. They haven't been allowed to come to fruition. They haven't been allowed to flourish. The world that we've built is pretty much of the ego and mind, as you can imagine. And we don't create the space or recognize the value of the other aspects and that's our biggest um, like mistake that's our biggest plunder I think not anything within context of history like momentous occasions now I'm talking like underneath it all fundamentally I feel like we need to connect with ourselves and um, I don't know this is just a it's just a random recording of what's going through my mind and it'll be more boring if I was to just sit here and meditate we need to learn constantly but you also need to be constantly so don't constantly be in your mind and don't constantly be in your ego choose to create the space the time allow for yourself to be more in your body 
be more in the truth of what you're suppressing, who you really are, not who you say you are. You know, let your body behave how it wants to behave for once, without ego shutting it down. Don't judge yourself. Whatever you're doing, however you're doing it, if that's with good intention and to the best of your ability, it might be really awesome, but people don't, you know, think it's any cool. Or, it, you know, you might physically want to do something well, but you just haven't connected with your body because society is giving you such a defensive ego, self-conscious ego, that you literally can't, you know, you can't, you can't move your body. You can't connect with your body. So your body's instincts don't take over. So you don't have good hand-guy coordination. You're not good with sports. You're, you're clumsy. You know, this is just like an example of one archetype. And, you know, I reckon that I could, in these terms, come up with different examples of individuals who are more attuned into different aspects and not attuned to others and come up with a, a rationale maybe like a line of questioning to see themselves as these different aspects and ask them like why is it that you don't let your body just do what it wants to do or let your imagination do what it wants to do let your impulses take over. Like, why Why not allow more space for that? Are you that self-conscious? Are you that held back by ego? Do you act differently when you're alone? Or when you think you're alone? To out in public, to different social circles, to work, to, you know, private life? Do you act different ar around animals? You know, do you prefer animals over humans? Animals don't judge you. Anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll probably start publishing soon. And this is my 50th video, which I may or may not launch with. Um, because the first one, I'm crying. And I'm basically asking myself... Well, you'll see. Or not. I want to tell the story of resource. And I want to start documenting it. Um, I don't know how to go about it. I'm really afraid of the judgment, of the ridicule, of what if I'm mad. <laughs> um... I think I really seek approval from society, but at the same time I'm brave enough to just go ahead and just try to prove it, because theory and concepts are not enough in this world. There's not even any room for exploration without judgment. That's how I feel. So I guess this is an attempt of me just going ahead, letting myself detach from ego, let go of that last resistance, and just go and do the thing. Whatever you feel positively like doing, just go do that thing. If you want to record yourself, just record yourself. If you want to pick up the phone and call a friend and talk through what you're feeling, do that. If you want to hire a therapist or go find some some courses on the NHS I think I should still look out for those too um, talk to people talk to animals <laughs> but before you freak the animals out learn how to connect with your body and when you are in your body more and you understand everything around you your mind's, you know, quietened, but still there, active, watching, learning, analyzing, wondering. 
but your ego is calm and your ego is not throwing a tantrum. Your ego has trust in the other aspects and starts to let go. And then, yeah. Then you'll get to be more present 